let's start. So first of all, I would like to thank you all. Well, first for your patience now uh, with those technical things. It's I'm in Canada and it's very early in the morning. It was pitch dark until a moment ago. Uh, and so thank you for the organizers. I'm so excited to be here. Last uh, conference in Belgrade was one of the most interesting that I've been and I'm thanks to this technology, I'm able to be there. Here in Canada, we have a different time. So we are already during the teaching term. I wouldn't have been able to be there otherwise. And while I was listening to the other papers, I was thinking that this panel works very well on this one hand, but on the other hand, it goes in the, well, it still works very well, but it goes in the, in the opposite direction in the sense that we start from the more recent, more complex, sophisticated, complex visions of, uh, of non-territorial autonomy. And we go back to the beginning of it, Karl Renner, in, the, my, in my case, um, uh, Vladimir Medem, which as, I, as the title of my presentation says, I am preparing a presentation, I'm preparing a translation of his uh, <clears throat> main writing on the national question, and in particular the so-called social democracy and the national question, first published in Russian and Yiddish in 1906, meaning 115 years ago, and pretty much never published in any other language until 2017, in which uh, it was uh, first published in uh, German by a person who, uh, Kai, who was there in the previous conference, and, and that was a very limited edition. Therefore, what I'm trying to say is that Vladimir Medem is mentioned in the literature very much it is mentioned by those who opposed him because uh, um, Lenin and Stalin made a very clear object of building their own nationality pro uh, program by opposing to that of uh, Medem and the Bund. And, um, and I, I feel that there is a, a need to publish, uh, so to allow the public to listen to Medem in his own words. On the other hand, from the point of view of this particular presentation, we are going the other way around in the sense that uh, by the time that Medem published his own work, this is after <clears throat> uh, Renner, and in particular after the <clears throat> South Slav presentation of their program in the 1899 uh, <clears throat> party Congress of the Gesamtpartei, which uh, um, Piet mentioned before, meaning the, the old uh, Austrian Socialist Party. Um, what I'm trying to say is that at that point, the notion of, uh, of non-territorial autonomy was new. Again, when I'm saying new, I am... Uh, I, it's not that I'm ignoring what Tova said, Tove said about the, <clears throat> the more historical examples of uh, autonomies that existed in Europe uh, before, uh, but I'm saying new in the sense of modern politics, Marxism, uh, etc. And I think that from the point of view of Medem and Bundis and other uh, members of uh, national minorities or <clears throat> nationalities uh, who uh, were trying to present their case not in nationalist terms. It was a very exciting notion, but again, in comparison to what we discussed today, it's very rudimentary. And uh, I think that I'm coming also from a slightly different place in the sense that I'm a historian. Uh, a historian, and therefore, in order to understand what he's proposing, we have to kind of forget all the proposals and the proliferation of uh, non-territorial aut autonomies in the 21st century that we see right now and that we are discussing, and think the way it, all this happened, not only 115 years ago when this was a very marginal, minority idea, even among 
the people who tr were trying to present, advance their national demands. Um, and, uh, and it was also, <clears throat> he published his work, as you can see, in 1906. So this is a year before um, 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 <clears throat> Otto Bauer's uh, own treatise, which is a much bigger, profound, rich uh, kind of treatment of the national question. But, uh, and Lenin and Stalin try to present the contradictions between Bauer and Medem uh, <clears throat> in their view. Oh, I forgot to put uh, my time, so I will help. It will help if you stop me when I'm going too much. Um, Lenin and Stalin were trying to present uh, their view in, in contrast to uh, Medem, and therefore they stress the differences between Medem and Otto Bauer, when at the end of the day, uh, Medem says, well, at the end of the day, the differences were marginal, and on the principle, we uh, were saying the same thing. So having had this uh, very <clears throat> extent oral introduction, uh, let me <clears throat> say that Medem was the, he, he was, he, as you can see, he had a very short life. He died at the age of 44. And by that time, he managed to establish himself as the main theorist of the Jewish labor wound, which, again, it was a mass party uh, at the time of his lifetime and at the time of his death. And But now it's uh, pretty much forgotten both in the historical literature and even more so in... Um, in public memory. So we are talking about um, a, an idea, <clears throat> non-territorial autonomy or national cultural autonomy as in, in Medem's term, that was marginal at the time, but at the same time, it represented a mass party, but that mass party because of things that happened there <clears throat> afterwards in Russia, the Bolshevik revolution that ended with all the socialist parties that were not uh, Bolshevik. And in uh... Yes. There is um, this connection problem. Ronnie, can you hear us now? Um, let's try to reestablish the connection, if possible. Do we have a link with him? <clears throat> Do we have the link now reestablished? Oh, yeah. <sighs> yes, can you hear me now? Sorry, Ronnie. I think we've, uh, we've uh, had a... Um, break in the connection for about a minute or so. The last word we heard was Bolshevik. <laughs> <laughs> so carry on, please. Um, <clears throat> the Bolshevik revolution and the Holocaust pretty much eliminated the Jewish labor boom. And therefore, uh, it uh, and other changes, it brought it into the merging of uh, the historiography and pretty much it, it's a non-existence in uh, public uh, memory, even though, as I was saying, it was a major party and Medem was the main theorist. And after he died very early on, he became a venerable figure 
in uh, the <clears throat> Bund party. Anyway, the, the purpose of uh, Medem's work was to establish the idea of <clears throat> what he called national cultural autonomy. It is a form of non-territorial autonomy. It's uh, <clears throat> as a way to organize self-determination for nationalities, not just for Jews in the Russian Empire, but for uh, nationalities in general. And his starting point when he writes was how weak from the point of view, from the theoretical point of view, was the situation of discussion on the national question in general and in Marxist literature in uh, particular. And therefore, his intention was to do that, to establish the basis for a theoretical understanding of the national question. <clears throat> um, he, <clears throat> again, uh, pretty much, I, I think that, uh, that what he wrote was very innovative at the time. And therefore, again, as a historian, I found it valuable in a certain way as I said, the publication of uh, Otto Bauer a year later kind of supersedes what he says and bring it even more into a place of uh, obscurity. But let's see if I can bring back my document. Oh, I see. Now, you, can you see now the document? Yes. Thank you. Okay, uh, and you should be seeing it better than before, is it? Well, you can still zoom it a bit more. <laughs> oh, well. Um, so let me say, let me, I, I wrote a paper, I decided to ignore and not to read it for you, so you can do. Let me, <clears throat> I'm summarizing here the main points in a, his view, and uh, and I will try to finish there. It's uh, <clears throat> almost two hours since the beginning of the session. I um, we can work from there. So first of all, what Medem does is separates the concept of nation and state, which again uh, I think that for uh, people sitting here, it's a uh, kind of uh, an obvious separation, but it wasn't obvious at the time, and it wasn't obvious in particular for for people writing on the national question with all the stress of nationalists at the time to unify that concept of nation and state. Again, uh, in the context of the Austrian Empire and in the context of the Russian Empire, it was not the case, but, um, but the demand was very much in that direction. And he stressed the need to separate territory from nation, again, it was something that was pretty much contested. So it was nice to have, after uh, Natalia's uh, presentation, the whole discussion with uh, about Slovenia, because it was, uh, it is still a current issue, but at the time it was precisely there where the whole discussion started with the presentation of this South Slav delegation to the Congress of the Socialist Party in 1899. And, <clears throat> and the South Slav delegation did precisely that. They separated the notion of territory from a nation, but it was pretty much contested by other nations and um, national socialist groups within this, the Gesamtparte, meaning the Czechs, Hungarians, etc., who actually demanded territorial self-determination. Even if it was within the context of a federation, they still demanded to have territorial self-determination. Therefore, <clears throat> point number three here uh, is, ooh, is uh, where are we? I can. <clears throat> point number three uh, is the need to separate, uh, to redefine citizenship in the sense that it will recognize the members of the different uh, <clears throat> nationalities and the creation of institutions, and I think that pretty much the first two papers discuss that, the institutions and the legal framework that would allow those uh, uh, national autonomies to exist in order to prevent conflict. And if all that happens, state would be 
multinational. In Yiddish, he talked about the <coughs> nationalitetem stat, oh, um, rather that the nation state. I, it's early in the morning here. You don't expect me to to my Yiddish to be right in my fingertips. And it's two minutes it, left, please. Okay, perfect. And therefore, um, he demanded, and in that sense, he was pretty much in tune with Renan Bauer, a redefinition of a democracy, which would reject that, you know, centrally atomist principle that uh, was so problematic to Renner and others. <clears throat> in other words, it, uh, and perhaps to summarize, um, it doesn't sound terribly innovative when we look at it from the perspective of 2021, but it was very innovative and very influential at the time to the extent that, well, it became the uh, political platform of his own party, but uh, several other parties <clears throat> adopted version of uh, autonomism in one form on, a, on another. I mean, when I mean meaning other parties, I mean Jewish parties who are not uh, sharing the same ideas, meaning some nationalist parties, etc., Zionists, etc., but also um, a, a parties, social democratic parties of other nationalities in the context of uh, the Russian, uh, <clears throat> the Russian uh, <clears throat> Tsarist Russia social democracy, the Georgians, etc., who started to demand that kind of uh, non-territorial autonomy. So um, I'm just uh, what I'm trying to do is to call the attention to this moment in history, and I apologize if this came somehow chaotically, but I hope that it was. Clear enough. If it's not clear, please uh, ask your questions, and I will try to make some sense of this. Thank you very much, Roni. <laughs> Thank you for your presentation and bringing into light uh, Vladimir Medem's uh, contribution to the topic of non-territorial autonomy. Uh, have we got any questions for Roni? Gechtman, have we got any questions? Okay, there, there seem to be, n there, is, there is one question, yes, thank you. I'm sorry I'm taking the floor so often. Uh, <laughs> um, I, thank you, Ronnie, uh, and of course uh, what you mentioned in the, in the end, uh, the, the influence of the Bund on, on other social democratic parties in the Russian Empire was of course very, very high. Um, I'm wondering also what I'm trying to find out more now is, uh, as you certainly know better than I, there, there is not only social democracy or Marxist socialism in, in Russia, but there's also the socialist revolutionaries. And um, they have a Jewish pendant, which is the, the, the socialist Jewish working party that develops non-territorial autonomy ideas even more explicitly than the Bund does. And uh, they are also in contact with, um, with bourgeois like uh, Simon Dubnov. And I'm, what I'm wondering is, do you know what, for instance, were the personal contacts between Medem and uh, one of those uh, uh, non-Marxist Jewish socialists like Ratner, um, or Shidlovsky, who is, might be the, the most well-known. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for the question. Is it Boris? Yes, it was a question from oh. Boris. Yes. Hi, Boris. Thank you for your question. Any, anyway, <clears throat> um, Medem and the Bundis were very well aware of the work by Dubnov and Shidlovsky. Actually, um, when the whole discussion started, which was very close after 1899, the Congress of the Gesamtpartei in, in, in Austria, um, 
the the party press started to publish <clears throat> um, articles, and in particular those people in, within the party that were pushing into this direction, that show to that direction, including by Jitlovsky, which uh, again, in the very <clears throat> kind of partisan uh, culture of the time, it was an uncommon thing to do because Jitlovsky was not a Marxist and therefore it was in general not okay to publish stuff by populists and, and members of other parties. But precise, but I think that what they were trying to do by publishing articles by Jitlovsky is to say, well, look, we have here some interesting and related kind of conception and and at the end of the day, they were influential. Um, I don't know if specifically on Medem. I don't think that he mentions that in his memoirs, but certainly on the party decision to uh, choose uh, the an autonomist uh, way, he specifically refers to uh, Dubnov. And again, I. I have a whole article on the, the Bund and Dubnov and how they relate to one another. And, uh, and it's interesting because at the superficial level, it looks like the Bund and Dubnov are very similar. And at the programmatic level, they, they, do, they, they are similar. They do share some things, but Medem's criticism of Dubnov is that at the end of the day he's a nationalist, meaning he, uh, well, and and uh, he is uh, not a materialist in the sense that focus on the, uh, you know, the basic infrastructure of reality, but he focuses on the world of ideas, and as such he has a kind of an Hegelian conception in which the Jews play the role that Germans place in Hegel, therefore they represent an Aufhebung, a higher stage of, uh, of, um, of development, but as opposed to, to Hegel, it's not the nation state which represent a higher stage, but actually the absence of state in Dubnov. And for Medem, all that is, uh, <clears throat> is, you know, it's idealist it's rubbish to say it in Marxist term because uh, he rejects that. So <clears throat> to, to, to summarize uh, <clears throat> and answering your question, he's very much aware, uh, Medem and the Bundis were very much aware of that, uh, but they try to take those ideas and put them in purely materialist Marxist terms and provide what they thought at the time was an innovative view of uh, representing it. And, uh, and again, I think that uh, it's pretty clear that uh, that uh, <clears throat> uh, Renner, so, sorry, Bauer, a year later in his publication, he goes much further and deeper um, in that direction. But the ideas are basically very, very similar with the clear exception of Jews themselves, which for Medem were one of those <clears throat> groups that the Serbs uh, uh, were a nationality that deserve a national autonomy, while uh, Bauer rejects that idea. And again, as I was trying to say, when uh, the the communication cut, Stalin and Lenin <clears throat> used that difference to make a criticism. Sorry, they went a little long. I hope okay. it makes sense. Yes, thank you very much. We very much appreciate the fact that very early in the morning, you from Canada, you're linking here in Budapest, but here in Budapest it's lunchtime, so I'm afraid we have to stop here. Uh, yeah, it it's was breakfast a, time. I have to go and have my breakfast. Yeah, it was an excellent session. I really uh, thank uh, all presenters, Tovin, Natalia, Pete, and Ronnie, for their contribution to our session. Um, we are going to come back at 2 p.m. after lunch and continue with the next. Uh, session uh, that will be chaired by Tove Maloy. So come back at two o'clock. Is there any other announcement? I think the organizers would like to say uh, briefly something.